thanks very much for uh, for joining the call, Matt, and giving us some time. Um, I thought, you know, we've had some key news items recently, and there'd be a good opportunity to uh, provide from guest investors to uh, engage with you a little bit and ask a few questions directly. You know, especially, you know, we've had some pretty transformational news recently, but uh, also there could be more to come. So um, uh, I thought, you know, we'd probably make this short and snappy rather than asking loads and loads of questions, but maybe kind of time it for half an hour or so and, um, you know, go through some of the major the major headlines and uh, what's to come and some, some of the, uh, uh, you know, main points going forward. Uh, Matt, maybe I could hand over to you briefly. Yeah, well, thanks for the introduction, Sasha, and it's good to get the opportunity to talk to some of the shareholders of the company. Um, it's certainly been a pretty exciting time for, for Armadale. We just um, put out a feasibility study at the end of March, and we've been doing um, working pretty hard to finalise updated um, DFS, which should be out imminently. I'm just putting the final touches on that at the moment. So, yeah, that's pretty exciting. We're pretty confident we're going to get some exceptional results with that. Um, yeah, and the, the recent capital raise, the company that did earlier last month, put the company in an extremely strong position, probably the strongest position it's been since I've been involved with the company since 2016. So we're really looking really positive on that front. And all, almost all those people involved in the capital raising were people that, I've, that are long-term supporters of the company and, and they're really sticky holders. So we expect that, that to be um, pretty positive going forward as well. And as you all know, I guess, I've joined the board as a director of the company last month. So I'm really looking looking forward towards production and financing over the coming months or so. Um, yeah, I guess, is there any questions from the group? Uh, yeah, th thanks. Uh, thanks, but I think um, Andrew Sutherland and uh, Money Sponge had a couple of questions. Maybe if one of you guys want to kick off um, first. Yeah, hi, hi, Sasha. Thanks. Um, struggling a little bit after a, a, a big night out, actually. But um, yeah, um, thanks for your time today, Matt. Um, so I had a question. There's a couple of things from my side. Um, I noticed that uh, Sierra Resources, you know, there was quite a bit of press last year about them sort of struggling there to cut production. Um, you know, they weren't getting decent graphite prices. Um, I think it's due to the, the sort of the purity of the graphite that they had. Um, and one of the things I spotted with Armadale was that, you know, we've got the sort of the 97% purities, which is like much higher than I think that they've got. Um, what, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think that we're, you know, better placed to be able to get higher prices than Sierra would? Yeah, absolutely. I guess this, the benchmark grade for graphite concentrates is 95%, and, and so are really battling even to get 90% in their initial years, and they're, they're, they're sort of getting towards 92, 93, 90, up to 94 more, more recently, but it's really um, not easy to sell products below the benchmark price, benchmark quality, and that's the main reason I invested heavily and came into Armadale is because of the purity of the Mahangi region. It's got the highest purity graphite anywhere in, in the world, So, and that's pretty much the strongest point that buyers want out of graphite. So, yeah, so Syrah are always going always to struggle to sell their product and they're going to struggle to produce a product that's going to be desirable. So, Yeah, okay, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, the other question I had before other people want to ask their questions was around the sort of the financing. So obviously everyone's been sort of focused on the DFS and, you know, we're waiting for the optimised DFS, which sounds like it's coming sort of imminently. Um, the, on the financing side, you, you know, a couple of RNSs have mentioned that you've been sort of like, um, you know, having talks on this and I, I think investors, obviously, certainly myself will be wondering what the sort of timeline around that will be, um, you know, cause it's such a sort of low capex project. Um, you know, uh, would we, could, could we expect to see some sort of news flow on that front, um, fairly soon? Yeah, that's um, very likely we'll see some news flow on that in the near future. We've, we've had some, um, consistently have had um, strong interest from finance parties over the, over the last couple of years, but since the, the DFS results came out, that's increased quite a bit, and, and I expect it to increase further with this updated um, feasibility study numbers. Um, we've actually got introduced by some potential funding groups from the engineering firm that we're working with, and um, 
they've worked on most of the East African graphite projects, so they think this is one of the best projects in East Africa. And if they're introducing potential funding parties, it's really, really looking very positive for the company. Wow. So can we can we draw from what you've just said that you're in sort of, you know, are you talking to any specific parties? Um, like, you know, uh, I know you probably can't say too much, but, um, you know, is there, is there are, you, are you sort of, ha you know, having sort of, pretty detailed discussions with any particular parties at the moment? There's, there's a couple of funds that are looking at um, that getting, um, I can't say too much about it to, to, without announcing anything, but it's looking very positive, I'll say that. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Uh, very good, Matt. It's Sasha, could you give us a flavour of the size of groups you're talking to and... You know, maybe the kind of uh, the range of groups you're talking to there. I mean, are they, are they EPCMs or uh, you know, upstream graphite users or more uh, mining mining focused um, funds or private groups? Um, the majority of the interest at the moment is coming from um, small to medium sized mining focused funds and private equity groups. We have had some interest from EPCM com um, groups out of China. Um, and they're willing to fund a portion of the capital cost, but not the whole amount. So you still need to find some funding sources from elsewhere as well. Uh, um, more likely, we'll look at small to medium-sized funds to fund a large part of the, part of the company's capex, because it is quite achievable for smaller groups to fund a project of this size. What's that, a project level or equity level? Uh, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, ha have you begun the kind of debt process as well or what do you think about the um, the blend there it's likely to be a mix of of those options um, yeah it would be good to get um, some of each some bit of equity a bit of debt and a, and a bit of project level funding so I noticed quite a lot of um, warrants are being um, exercised here which you you know, you must be quite pleased with with the, um, uh, you know, the, the let's say the waterfall, the stream of warrants that are coming in. If that, could t I mean, I added up the warrants. Some drew my attention to them. They're quite large, actually. You know, there's quite quite a few out there, which is probably not a bad place to be um, as a as a uh, you know looking forward to that equity proportion, which means that you know if you can if you can trigger those to be exercised, um, then you you know it's it's, it's really kind of uh, mitigate sense, uh, the amount that you might have to raise in the market um, and you know helps on the other side with the debt guys as well do you have, is there like a strategy in place to um, try and um, get that kind of stream uh, activated yeah, the last last um, three capital raises we had warrants at higher prices and we want to try and push the share price up each each time to try and get um, funding in without having to go back to um, using brokers or to try and put the company in a very strong financial position so we can negotiate with some of these other groups and potentially use some of that money to be to fund the equity portion of the project development. So if we can do that, we'll be very well placed. How many how many warrants outstanding do you have? What's the total? Um, um, it's in the region of 100 million. So that would be, uh, how much would that be at these prices? So that would be 3 million, would it? 3 million Four pounds, million. roughly, yeah. 4 million pounds. Okay. Very good. There's a question. Uh, Andrew Sutherland had a question. I don't know if he's on the call on um, the mining license, how that's progressing. Um, that's Hi. progressing. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, could you just, just uh, about mining licenses, what is required, um, what you've applied for, uh, timescales, all that sort of thing? Yeah, we're, we're finalising the documentation to submit the mining licence at the moment. We'll have all the documentation from, from the Perth side um, finished by Friday. So we're aiming to submit that um, imminently. Um, we want to get it in and approved before the elections come up, um, which is coming up in October this year. Okay, perfect. And um, that is, that's the full mining licence, is it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks very much.
Thanks, Tantri. Um, so sticking to the, um, opt the DFS recently and the, this next piece of work that's coming out that you're, you said the engineers are advancing on completion for, I think, could you explain to, to everyone how, you know, what a mining schedule is and how the, the recent work with the higher grade zones has worked into optimizing uh, this DFS, the, the original DFS? Um, and uh, potentially why it wasn't included in the in the first piece of work. Yeah, we used a um, lower cutoff grade on the first um, first feasibility study, which would slightly reduce the initial capital cost because you have to remove um, less 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 dirt um, in the in the early years. If you want to start getting to the higher grades, you have to mine through some of the lower grade material, and with the updated um, um, mining schedule, we're going to be moving. Quite a bit more material. We went from around 1.1 strip ratio to 1.95 strip ratio, so we'd be moving sort of uh, maybe 30% more um, material, but we'll be getting 30% more throughput from the plan. So as it works out, that's going to increase the profits of the project. So basically, we're moving moving more dirt to get more using the same plant. If that makes sense. Yeah, so sure. Is that, price, how, is that higher grade yeah. graphite flake uh, worth more? How, how does that actually work with graphite? Explain a little bit more. I mean, I'm just getting my head around the different different size, sizes, the different purities. Uh, they all they all have different markets uh, for them. You know, some of the, some are battery grade, some are for graphene. Um, you know, and and different um, end users have different um, requirements for them. So, could you just explain to us a little bit about how? Uh, the Mahenge, Mahenge, is it Mahenge or Mahenge? Um, Mahenge, Mahenge, how the Mahenge project fits into, um, into slotting into potential, um, uh, um, you know, the market, what, what, uh, what the end use would be. And maybe going on from that, you know, just expand a little bit upon the, um, the offtakes that you have um, already cited. I believe there might be, um, I think it's four or five. I'm not too sure. I kind of it's going back a little bit, but um, you know whether they're still live and 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 your conversations there. So quite a big question. It's just a little yeah. bit about the characteristics of our resource, about the end users and potential market for that, and then um, how that slots into the deals you shine, you've signed so far. Yeah, um, the Mahengi graphite is um, is exceptionally high purity, which is. The dominant use for high purity graphite is the EV battery market, which is the, 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 probably the, going to be the biggest and the fastest expanding market for graphite. So we're going to be largely targeting that. Um, there is some larger flake size, which is used for expandable graphite and graphene and some really high value products. Um, but yeah, so that's what Mahangi is for. The offtake parties are mostly for EV, EV um, type applications as well. So. That's the market we're primarily ta primarily targeting, and we're looking to try and get some towards definitive um, some binding offtakes on those in the coming weeks and months as well. We want to, we want to see how much scale of production was going to be from the updated DFS as well, so we could really know how much we're going to be producing for them, for them sorry for some of these suppliers. So yeah, and in regards to the flake size and distribution, the updated um, feasibility study is just going to be more tons of the same distribution because the distribution across the deposit is fairly uniform. So we're producing 30% more material each year of the same quality. Okay, uh, thanks Matt. Just, just a question on the binding offtakes. Um, how, would they, how would they work? Would they make upfront payments to help um, um, with project construction, project finance, or is it, uh, is it not a set path? Most most um, companies get funding from the EPCM contractor rather than the, the offtake partners. So the EPCM group who build the plant itself, that's about 14 to 15 million US dollar cost. You can get funding from those groups, but not usually the offtake partners. Okay, thanks. Any, any more questions from from anybody? Sorry, Sasha, I was on mute. Um, 
Gotcha. You're very quiet. Can you hear me? Sorry, I've put the microphone closer as well now. Um, I don't know if, Matt, you're able to tell us a little bit more about the funding process, uh, not necessarily uh, going into any of the details. And um, you, you kind of mentioned, you know, some of the options that you've got, but you mentioned, um, uh, you know, trying to get a mix of equity and debt. Um, are there other options on the table, like, for example, with the binding off takes, whereby you could actually get, um, you know, some upfront um, cash like Horizonte Minerals has, has done uh, in terms of a, a royalty they've managed to, to agree? Are there, are there other sorts of funding that you're um, reviewing? Yes, yes, there's potential to get um, royalty type agreement fundings, and but in in the industrial mills, it's pretty unlikely to get funding from off-take partners. I don't think that's a common source of funding for any industrial mineral. So, um, but there's plenty of funding sources with projects of this of this high return out there, and I guess we have to think of the best option for shareholders. Yeah. So, what 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 can you um, expect next in with regards to funding then? Um, possibly some. Um, well. It's that, there's a lot happening on that front, so I've got to be careful what I say on a, on a shareholder call. Okay, I'm trying to push you, but <laughs> I can see I can see that. But well, let's let's wait for some RNSs maybe. Okay. Um, just bear with me. I had a uh, had a few other questions as well, Sasha. So just bear with me. I'll go through my list quickly and just make sure that um, none of them have been asked. Um, <laughs> With regards to the mining license, um, there's a number of steps to achieve that, right? Um, uh, there's the so I assume there's going to be a fair bit of news flow with regards to that in itself before you actually get the mining license, because I assume you'll have to do a wrap the uh, environmental studies uh, and uh, water bores, those sorts of things, if. Um, uh, uh, is that is that all being done, or, and or are you still expecting to announce um, progress on those activities? All of those activities have been done, but we had to update the feasibility study figures and get that um, a few of those bits and pieces that the government's asked us to have in those applications. We've got all that stuff out of the updated DFS now, so we are in a position to go really hard on all of those items and get the mining license in, maybe even within. You know, really imminently, maybe even next week. Okay. And what's the relationship uh, with the company and uh, the government and the, the locals there? It's uh, very it's very favourable. It's a, it's a really easy place to operate. There's like a lot of people want work. The government's really pro mining now after having some problems in 2017. I think they really really recognise that they needed to get some a lot of foreign investment. So even okay. people on the people on the side are really keen to get some work and some industry going. Um, yeah, it's very well located in terms of, of um, locals. Yeah. So are companies like BlackRock um, making it a little bit easier for you guys um, to sort of follow? Because they've, they've managed to do all this, uh, haven't they? They've, they've, they've been through these steps. So does it make it a bit cheaper and a bit easier for you guys to just uh, achieve you know, uh, what they've done, but... Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've done it on an absolute fraction of the, um, the cost that BlackRock have managed to do their uh, their studies and their mining permits, and um, we really know how the system works. We're working with the same groups that those that BlackRock and Walkabout and all those other groups used as well, so we know how it works from our consultants and, and working in the sector as well, so it's made it far easier for us. Yeah. So why what makes because uh, Armadale's um, uh, economics are far superior than most. So what's what is it that makes the project just so um, economic and you know uh, yeah? Can you just sort of explain to us why the numbers are so good? The numbers are so good because the grade's exceptionally high. It's the our project has the highest grade by 
um, over the mine life of all the graphite projects in East Africa, and ultimately grade is king when it comes to mining because you have to move less material and you get more, more out. So um, not only do we have high high grade, low strip ratio, we also have a premium product. And, so and how does it scale? It, um, we're currently into the mine life um, in the feasibility study, and the deposits open in almost every direction. So, so it's still it's quite, quite open. It's open everywhere, it's, and we're only using a small part of the deposit. And what's the plan for that then? Is there is I mean, there's more than enough mine life here, right? For for the time being, but, but um, is the plan once there's cash flow being generated to to look at um, exploring these other areas, or uh, would you do that? Uh, sooner. Um, well, the, we have an expansion um, in the feasibility study to, to double throughput, which increases production to around 120,000 tons, which we announced um, last month. So um, there's one stage ramp up. It's possible to do a second stage ramp up as well, or extend the mine life, which would further improve the project economics. But to go out past 15 or 15 or 20 years, it's going to have little impact with the discount rates of 10%. So, um, but it really is a scalable project. Yeah, and sorry, just going back a little bit. You mentioned um, and and just squash this because again, I'm digging. You, you mentioned funding parties, but um, does that mean you're talking to institutions as well, or is that just something you can't comment on at the moment? I really can't comment on that at the moment. Um, okay. Okay. Um, that that's everything from me. Thank you. Thanks for your time. No worries. Yeah, thanks, Gaj. Uh, I've got one more question. Uh, probably could be the last uh, from me. It's it's sent in by Groggy, Groggy Dealer. Um, do you, Matt? What are your comments on the valuation at the moment? Uh, you know, uh, we've obviously been bouncing our head off uh, 4P uh, quite a bit, and there's been a lot of liquidity uh, on that. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, I think. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah, what are your comments on the valuation? The current market cap is what, uh, 17 million? And uh, where we should, we should be for uh, given the project economics and et cetera? Well, I think um, a lot of projects that are at this stage of advancement are usually ca um, usually capped at around 15% of the NPV of the project. So I think and um, that's a more standard project. And this project has got exceptional economics. So I expect we should be trading at a premium to that, which is. Um, Quite a lot higher than the current share price. <laughs> so it wouldn't wouldn't be like a CEO to say it's undervalued. I get. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is undervalued, in my opinion. Okay. Look, I'm not going to take up too much time. We're just at the at the um, at the half hour stage now. Uh, maybe I, I just thought one quick question. Armadale's got got it's kind of, kind of special situation. It's 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 got a um, you can be used as an investment vehicle. You can make investments um, in other companies, and um, you know you're more of a holding company. Is that the way it works? Um, have you got any more plans around that, or you know maybe the longer term um, uh, ambition? Um, you know certainly you know when, as you kick off our, um, uh, Mahenge into into production and construction. Um, how does all, all that fit together with a wider strategy? Or is there at not the moment, one yet? At the moment, the, pro pro the focus is getting this project into into production as soon as we can. I think we're doing something else, in my opinion, um, than we can from getting this project off the ground and moving. Right, so focus is there. Okay, no, I just thought I'd ask. Look, I've got nothing else. Um, uh, I'll open it to the floor for 10 seconds, uh, you know. Um, and if not, we can we can we can uh, end, I guess. Unless Matt, you want to summarise what what's to come the next um, the next uh, uh, period as well. Well, I've got another one, Sasha. If I could, if I could. Sure. Yeah. So just picking up on your point there. Um, so obviously the focus is on Mahengi, but um, it sounds like <clears throat> you know funding um, seems the discussion seems pretty advanced um, and. As you just said, Matt, we'll watch out for RNSs on that. Um, 
But do you do you see Armadale, the vision of Armadale, do you see it becoming like potentially a multi-asset company? I mean, obviously, you've obviously focused on Mahengi at the moment, but, you know, investors thinking longer term, would you consider, say, bringing another asset in, like, you know, the quality of Mahengi and, and progressing that as you've done um, and just building the company out? Yeah, that's, that's um, maybe a year or two away at the moment, but um, it's certainly the cash flow you get from this project would put put, it, put the company in a really strong position to a, a lot of different things. Yeah. Are you also, I mean, obviously you're a large shareholder as well, right? And you've just bought, uh, joined the board recently, so um, that's a really positive thing. Are you going to try and, um, what, what, what I like about Armadale at the moment, holding sort of a decent amount of stock myself is the shares in issue versus the cash flow. So like theoretically, you know, you get to production, say in a year's time, um, obviously, you know, the first year or so you might not pay dividends or what have you, but um, as, as you go, as you progress, you could potentially um, pay dividends. Are you, are you going to try and, you know, going back to the funding side of things, are you going to try and limit the equity portion going forwards? I mean, obviously, all the, all the recent fundraisers you've done have been very slender in terms of, like, you know, you've not put out big chunks of equity to brokers. You know, you've kept it within a high net worth um, sort of, like, audience. Are you going to try and limit the dilution going forward so that, you, you know, you, you keep a, a, a comparatively low shares in issue sort of thing? Yeah, that's de- certainly the intention. We've tried to keep, um, tried to do the raises at a premium to the to the share price, and try to do them at the best that we can for shareholders. I guess, of course, myself, and my family, are some of the largest shareholders of the company, so <laughs> not that's the only reason to do that. But um, yeah, we definitely want to try and limit the dilution as we go forward. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, Matt, um, uh, maybe we can wrap up now and you can just go through a, a, a quick summary of um, what's to come over the next um, few weeks and months or, you know, the um, work streams you're working on. Yeah, we're working, um, as I mentioned before, we're finishing the, the um, updated definitive feasibility study, which is going to be out very imminently. We're just putting the final touches on that at the moment. We're going to um, get the mining permits and all the required permits in place, like, quite soon after after um, publishing the updated DFS. Um, we've got further talk on off-takes, moving towards binding off-takes. Um, obviously funding funding discussions will be well advanced as we go forward. So there's a huge amount of news folk to come. Okay, very good. Um, I think that's probably, uh, probably us. Um, Matt, thank you very much for your time. And, no worries. Um, um, hope to speak to you in the in the near future. Look forward to um, uh, your next piece of news. Thanks. Thanks, Cheers, thanks Sasha. Bye bye. Bye.